While it's clear that people will work hard to obtain something of value, what has been largely overlooked is the notion that working hard can also make those same things more valuable. While humans and other animals readily apply more effort for better outcomes, they sometimes view the same outcomes as more rewarding if more, not less, effort was used to attain them. Ty, what time did your alarm go off this morning? Uh, 4.20. 4.20. Oh, good for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I see what you did there. Uh, I see what you did there. Yeah, mine went off at 4. Okay. So I beat you. But I mean, <laughs> put one in the wind column for Ben. <laughs> there is a point to that question. What was the first thought in your head when that alarm went off at 4.20? Uh, can I sleep until 424 and still make it to my workout in time? There you go. My, my immediate first thought, this literally just happened this morning was, man, I want to go back to sleep right now. Yeah. But what did you do? What did you do in that moment? I, I had to get up. You had, you got up. Yeah. You made that quick split setting, uh-huh. second decision. Getting up is going to be more beneficial yeah. than staying asleep. Yeah. Your body wanted you to stay to sleep, mm-hmm. stay asleep. Mm-hmm. Your brain told you, Hey, it would actually be better if we got a few more hours. That's yeah. exactly what I went through. Yep. My first immediate thought was, man, I really want to just stay in bed. Yep. But then I shut that off. I said, yeah. shut up. <laughs> I'm not going to listen to you this you morning. Shut your mouth when you you're shut talking your to me. mouth when you're talking to me. And I got up and guess yeah. what? And it was almost immediate for me. It, as soon as I got up, yeah. I was like, I, ult- I already feel better. Yeah. That it, I did it's, this. it's within 90 seconds, yes. I think, by the time you get up. Cause it, and, and it goes through my head every single morning. For sure. Every morning is, all right, if I don't go to the five o'clock workout, okay, can I do the six and still get showered, ready to go for whatever I have next? Mm-hmm. And then it's, it's literally justification of why I need to stay in bed. Yeah. Every single time. And it's, and it's literally, and I'll, and I'll get probably like, a minute or two into it like okay if i move this or if i do that i can do this and i'll still be okay and that's fine and then you know what i'll get to that and i'll just push that back and then i'll catch myself and I'll just be like no i'll go yeah and this last couple months has been um really good training for that right yeah it's amazing how quickly this all happens mm-hmm. like i said alarm goes off and you experienced this morning too first thought is don't want to get up yeah Shut that thought off, get out of bed, walk to the, my, my walk to the bathroom is 10 feet. Yep. By the time I hit the bathroom, turn on the light, I already feel better. Yep. And I'm like, thank goodness I did that. That's right. I'm glad I got up mm-hmm. and now I'm ready to rock. Roll. But yep. making that decision, shutting off that voice is pretty hard to do. I mean, arguably that's the hardest decision I make all day long. <laughs> arguably. Like think about it. Like, yeah, yeah some days there's some really big decisions you have to make, but as far as pressure goes, like that is probably the hardest decision that I make yeah. all day. And the truth is there's decision points. There's points of contention like that all day long. Yeah. For you, you said that's the hardest because sleep feels so good. But the yeah. truth is we're doing that all day long. We're making these mm-hmm. decisions. And there's this principle called the, uh, the law of least work. It's a mm-hmm. psychological term called the law of least work. Mm-hmm. And so I found this article uh, or this study, this journal called the effort paradox. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're talking about here. This, this paradox of I want to sleep in or do I get up and go about my business? It's the effort paradox. Mm-hmm. And this article is titled the effort paradox. Effort is both costly and valued and is written by Michael. And this, this is going to be the hardest thing I do. This episode is it pronounce these people's <laughs> names correctly. Michael Inslet. Amatai Shinov and Christopher Olivola. And if I butchered y'all's names, I apologize. Because I know you listen of to the course podcast. Of course they are. I know you're subscribed. I know you've rated five stars. I know you've done all that. So I apologize for butchering your name. But they wrote this article, like I said, The Effort Paradox. Effort is both co- both costly and value. And it talks about exactly what we're talking about here. So they say, they open up the article and say, humans tend to avoid effort and, psycholog- and psychology has offered an explanation. The law of least work, which states, given a choice between similarly rewarding options, 
Organisms learn to avoid those that require more work or effort. This law helps explain inventions like dishwashers, automobiles, and other modern day niceties we enjoy on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So let's use the dishwasher example. Yep. The, law is, the law of least effort says it's easier for me to put dishes into a dishwasher, let that wash it, mm -hmm. as opposed to me sitting here hand washing everything. Mm -hmm. So, See, I disagree with that. It's, it's not easier to hand wash? Oh, I, I, or it's not easier to I think dishes in the I, I think um, in, for me it's the unloading of the dishwasher. <laughs> it's like, all right. It, it, it's like the idea of a garage, right? It's like, it's easier just to kind of just keep the garage clean mm -hmm. than let it get trashed and then have to spend an entire day cleaning it. I kind of think the same thing with the dishwasher. But in the moment, it's not. In the moment, it's in, easier in just to let it go. In the moment, yes. In, yeah, the, yeah. in the moment, it's easier just to put a cup into a yeah. sink yeah, or yeah. into the dishwasher and, uh -huh. and forget it. And that. I haven't always been this way. Tiffany actually got me on it because she washes as she goes. Like she cooks and cleans at the same time. Mm -hmm. So when you're done eating, like the kitchen's almost already clean. Yeah. And so I, I learned that from her is she hand washes most everything because then you don't have to wait. It's like, you know, the people, that, and, and, and if, if you're one of those people, um, I'll pray for you. But if you just leave stuff in the sink and then I'll handle it tomorrow morning, Ugh, that's my nightmare. That bothers like, me so, so much. So, so with a dishwasher, it's kind of the same idea. It's like, all right, let's just get it done now. Like, I don't, I don't want to wait. And yes, it may take... It may take a little bit, but like it's it's very minimal. Yeah. So I know I'm going on a tangent and going away from the article, but it's like okay. So to wash this plate is probably going to take me anywhere between 15 and 30 seconds, depending yeah. on like how stuck on everything is, right? Or I'm gonna have to rinse it and put it in the dishwasher, and that's going to take 10 seconds anyways. Yeah. So might as well spend just a little bit more time and then be done with it and yeah. put it away, and then you're done. For the record, I couldn't agree with you more. I hate, yeah. I I never use the dishwasher. Yeah. My wife, on the other hand, she loves the dishwasher. Yeah. To me, it's annoying. This is, a no, this is not even, has nothing to do with the article. Didn't intend for this. But to me, it has nothing to do with the ease. It's, I need that plate yeah. or that knife. <laughs> so I need to wash it so I can have it. Because if you stick it in the yeah. dishwasher, it sits there for three days before you run the, before you have enough dishes in there yeah, to right. run the dishwasher. Anyway, yeah. that's not the point. Sorry. But in the moment, it yeah. is easier just to put a bowl in the dishwasher than it is to take out the sponge, get mm. the soap. Right. Maybe you're saving yourself 20 seconds, but in your brain, you're justified by saying yeah. it's easier. So they say, while it's clear that people will work hard to obtain something of value, what has been largely overlooked is the notion that working hard can also make those same things more valuable. While humans and other animals readily apply more effort for better outcomes, they sometimes view the same outcomes as more rewarding if more, not less, effort was used to attain them. Yeah. What are some examples of that? Think about accruing wealth. Wealth feels better. You feel more value in it when you have to save, when you have to invest in the right areas mm -hmm. versus if somebody just hands you yeah. a lump sum of cash. 100%. That's, that's one example. Another one is weight loss. Via diet and exercise, you actually put in the time and effort and the energy or somebody that goes and has surgery. Yeah. How many people that go and have surgery to lose weight? Now, some people it works out very, very well for them. But how many people end up getting that weight back? Yeah. Because the time, energy, and effort, there's no value in just having it all. Well, there's a different level of ownership. Right. Like when you put in the work, and, and an example for me is, and, and I've told the story before, but when I was five or six, my parents got me this white bike. And I remember it had, remember the, the pad, the, um, had the handlebar pad, the neck pad, and then the pad, you know, you'd put the pads on the bike or whatever. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so it had black and white checker. And I remember this bike and I love this bike, but my parents bought it for me. Well, I left it at the park one day across the street and it got stolen. And my parents were like, mm, you're going to pay for your own bike. So I had to do chores. It was like a month or two. Mm -hmm. And I'd get $5 every time I do the chores that day. And I saved up and I ended up buying my own bike. And guess what? Never I got left at the park. Care of that thing. Guess like what? Crazy. Never ever got left at the park. Yeah. You saw the value. That bike. Yep. Yep. So there's just a different ownership when, and like you said, the value of it is just mm -hmm. very different when when you spend more effort yeah. and time into achieving whatever that is. And so that's where the paradox comes in, because you know that to be true. You know, if I put in the time mm -hmm. and the work and the effort, I'm gonna value this more. Yeah. It's gonna be worth more while. Wow but you're competing with the thought with the law of least effort. 
it's easier for me to get a bike handed to me yeah. than it is to have to work for it. Right. And so that's where the paradox comes in. And on the one hand, so on the one hand, effort is costly. And it says the notion that effort is costly, that organisms find it averse and tend to avoid it is supported by many lines of evidence. Tasks that require effort typically increase sympathetic nervous system activity, including increasing blood pressure, ventilation, sweating, pupil dilation, and plasma norepinephrine release. Behaviorally, there are signs that organisms often dislike and devalue hard work. Effort, both mentally and physically, is typically avoided. When given tasks that offer equal rewards but different levels of demand, organisms usually learn to avoid the more demanding one. What is more, willingness to, advert, to exert effort usually decreases as a function of the amount of effort applied. While there is some controversy about how much effortful work is needed before people become unwillingly or unable to exert effort, it is clear the effort expenditure does eventually decline with time on task. Another indication that effort is costly comes from the finding that people are often willing to accept fewer rewards to avoid effort. That is, just as people discount rewards by their associated delays, so too do they discount rewards by the amount of cognitive or physical effort required to obtain them. So basically saying that we don't like the effort, like it doesn't feel good in the moment to put yourself in a situation that requires effort. Yeah. You're likely, it feels easier, it feels better in the moment to sit mm -hmm. on the couch and watch Netflix than it does to go read a book or go out and do something, you know, yard work, whatever, mm -hmm. right? If given the choice, and I'm sure if there's a scale, yeah. some people, I'm actually a default lazy person, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it feels, I have no problem on a Sunday afternoon when football's on watching eight hours of football. Like that doesn't bother me one bit. Or as some people I know that just that funny. crushes them. Like That's it's, funny, yeah, because I'm that way. I can't like I can't sit still. Yeah. Like that even, doesn't bother even me. Even watching bit. football, like I'll get I'll get two quarters into it, and I love watching football. Mm -hmm. I'll get two quarters into it, and then I'll I've, oh hey I've got to go get something. I got to go do something. And my wife always gives me a bad time. She's like, you can't just sit still. Oh, like, I can't. can't. <laughs> yeah, which is which is funny because because as I look at, at you and I, like you have a very uh, a very strong skill set of like completing tasks. Um, whereas like I'm, I, I'm different in that way. Right. I am more, uh, I'm more abstract in it. If that right. makes sense. Like I, I'm over here and I'm over there. I'm over there. I'm over here. I'm over here. It's like, I don't, I don't do as well of a job of like finishing a task where you like, if you've got a list, like those are all going to get done. Yeah. And I do too. And I feel, feel value checking those off, but like, if I'm doing yard work, like, okay, I'm over here on this and then I'm over there on that and I'm over there on that and I'm over on this and I'm over on that. And I may not finish any of them like simultaneously, like at the, before I move on to the next task, right. I get them all done, but you it's start just, a lot, but don't finish. Yeah. But I, I like, well, but that's we, just how you process. And for me, and I don't know if it's just because of my journey or if I'm wired this way and I don't know if this article talks about it, but like no, it doesn't talk I, about being a weirdo. Being a being a, <laughs> being a that's psychopath. one of the sections. Be, here's a psychopath. <laughs> here's a key symptom. <laughs> but like, for example, like this is not describing me. Right. I am opposite. Like, I would rather go do the work. Like, so for example, Saturday, um, the the gym that I go to is out in the country, and there's this. Uh, we have a running track that's that's 400 meters. And it was really cool because I, I love that it's out in the country. It's in a barn behind the owner's house and, um, and it's outside. You run around a pond and it's just like, I love it out there. And the track has gotten washed out. And so I literally take my entire Saturday to go help him go grade in, put in new drainage system, do all that stuff. And I'm out there like by myself doing all this. And he's like, dude, like I, you don't, have to do all this. Like, I appreciate you like helping. It wouldn't get done and I appreciate you, but like, man, this is too much. I was like, literally, I love this. Like yeah. I love, like I would much rather the effort sometimes than the actual reward. Yeah. And I don't know if that's just a, 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 a mechanism of just like, I, that's the accomplishment for me is being busy and being doing stuff, which isn't necessarily good because I think maybe sometimes I miss on the rewards. Like I right. could have spent those eight hours 
and I could have been doing business development and that could have translated to say, revenue to my family. I was going to say that could be, that could still, the law of least effort could have applied there because for you, that's yeah. less effort yes. to do that than it, it is to go do business development. That's right. Fitness yeah. is the same way for yeah. you. Yeah. It was a lot less effort to skip workouts yeah. Yeah. for three years yeah. than it was to actually do the workout. Yeah. So yes, I agree with you. We find avenue. It's a nuanced discussion. Like we talked there about last go. week, we can find avenues that we can, we don't mind putting the effort in. Yeah. And I think that's where the paradox yeah. comes in. Yeah. But again, if you just back up a little bit, yeah, that eight hours for you was enjoyable. That didn't feel like that's effort, rest as opposed to yeah. the alternative, yeah. which is something that you that's don't right. find enjoyable. That yeah. requires more effort. Yeah. So I do agree with you yeah, that see, that's the personality nuance. wise, right. yeah, yeah. we're drawn to different things, but from an overall principle perspective, mm -hmm. that's a, you were avoiding some sort of effort unintentionally. Yeah. And it doesn't make you a bad person. That's how we all, that's just how we're wired. Oh, it does. We're I, was gonna, I was avoiding being a dad. <laughs> right. It would have taken more effort to go be I'm with your kids, four I'm kids. Kidding. I'm totally, I'm totally for kidding. For the whole day. Right. But that's where, and that, this is where I want to focus most of the discussion. That's where the paradox comes. Because we know that, yeah. right? We don't love, like, getting ourselves to work extremely hard is uncomfortable. There's a yeah. lot of aspects to it that, and most of the time, a lot of us make that decision. It's just not worth it. That's why fitness is such a struggle. When you yep. boil it down, I mean, you can blame money. You can blame lack of community. You can blame lack of access to the gym. You can blame a lot of things. But when you boil it down to it, fitness really comes down to a lack of effort. Mm -hmm. The reason we don't do it is because we would rather do something else yep. than put in the effort and the time it takes. Yeah. I want to take a quick break and thank our partners, Sleep Number, and highlight a couple of things they're doing. Guys, these Sleep Number beds are unreal. The technology that they've created the feedback that it gives you on your sleep. I've got the app opened up right here. They tell you things like your heart rate, your heart rate variability, your breathing rate, all these type uh, metrics and feedback to give you so that you can improve your quality of sleep. They're all over the place. You can go and check yourself out at Sleep Number store, wherever you live. Go to sleepnumber.com as well. They've got great resources on there. We just talked about this not too long ago. They have a whole blog section, all these articles, things that you can improve your health. Sleep number is definitely changing the game when it comes to betting. So get yourself to sleep number, get yourself to sleepnumber.com and check them out. Now back to the episode. And so that's where the effort adds value portion of the paradox comes in. And the article says, despite growing and prominent work in cognitive neuroscience detailing effort, substantial costs, it is clear that effort also adds substantial value both to the products of effort and to effort itself. An early indication of effort's perceived value came from classic work in social psychology on cognitive dissonance and effort justification. This work has repeatedly demonstrated that the more effort is exerted to obtain things, the more value they are assigned retrospectively. Just like your bike example. You place more value on the bike that you had to earn as opposed to the one that you were given says, moreover, evidence of efforts added value has also been demonstrated in the human brain. Receiving rewarding feedback for effortful performance amplifies the hemodynamic and electrophysiological signals generated by the brain areas sensitive to reward, an effect that is muted or sometimes absent for non-effortful Think about it. When we're bragging about our accomplishments, how many people do you hear saying, dude, I'm a millionaire. My dad just died yeah. and gave me a bunch gave of money. Gave me everything. Yeah. yeah. You don't hear that. No. You hear what, what you'll hear is, hey, I took this and I, and I grinded it out and I was working and I did this. That is where we get very boastful and mm -hmm. we want to like let people know. But we're not proud necessarily of the little effort. I mean, now I, I say that out of one side of my mouth. The other side is what do you see on social media, right? Passive income. Like, yeah, that's yeah. the big, that's been the big thing for the last decade is there's okay. no such thing, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of work put in to get yeah. that passive Multi -level income. <laughs> marketing has tried over and over and over yeah. to say, Hey, I just work from home. I don't do, you don't have to do anything. And I just, but they're playing on the law of least effort, right? They're exactly playing on that right. part of your brain that says, Oh, that's attractive to me. It's yeah. not going to take any effort yeah. to get that. Yeah. It's exactly what they're doing. They're brilliant. Yes. It's brilliant marketing. Yeah. 
So, and, and I totally get it. And that's, and it's the truth because I know for me, what did I, what have I built my early story around is hard work, mm-hmm. right? That's what I'm proud of. And, you know, as well, you should be uh, yeah, because of the years and the time. and the Yeah, but I think, in. but I think it's gotta be, um, it's gotta be in perspective because I wore that as a badge of honor. Um, and yes, like was I, but was I super lucky? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I got super lucky. And, and I, if I diminish the fact that like, Hey, things happened that were, that had nothing to do with my hard work, then like, Hey, maybe my value is less. So you yeah. build up the hard work aspect. And I, when that becomes your crutch, that's when it becomes that, that's when it becomes that performance identity that we talk to is like the more you work, the better you are. Mm-hmm. And there's a line like Cam Haynes. I was just listening to his deal with a- Andy Frisella, um, and he's on this tour and we were talking about it the other day, but, um, is you know he is that guy that is like hey listen i don't really know what's going to happen i don't i don't know how to solve this i'm just going to keep working and that's that's amazing and he but he handles it from a place of humility where it's okay hey listen i'm not the best never have been the best i come from humble beginnings i just am consistent Mm -hmm. like i have my flaws i struggle i doubt i do all these things but I just am consistent in putting in that effort in whatever it is that I want to. And I'm not even sure when you're unsure of what direction to go, that's when, okay, I just got to put my head down and keep moving forward. Right. And that's that consistency that he does. But when you wear that as a badge of honor, and that's what I did for, for a long time, is my identity was in being a hard worker. And then when I would have, when I would burn out or when I would have these times where I would avoid effort, then I felt like a failure and then, then I just spiral and that right. leads to three years of, you know, yeah. really bad habits. Yeah. But on the plus side, think about your NFL career. You valued that career that six years, mm-hmm. you valued mm-hmm. that six years because you always recalled the three or four years it took to actually get there. Yeah. Sleeping in your car, mm-hmm. the endless travel of workouts, the, the constant, you know, trades and release, like, yeah. You valued your time in the NFL because of how much effort it took to get there. Yeah, now, the there's still example. effort. Yes, there's yeah. still effort on guys that you know, because the you would say the opposite. Well, you probably appreciated it more than a first round pick. Not necessarily true because uh, yeah. the first round pick, although it looks like they were handed a first round pick, think about the there's years of, of life. Yeah, like Darren's a good example. Yeah. He was handed. He was the first Cowboys first pick that year. Uh huh. So you would think, oh, he was just handed an NFL career. No, mm. he was taking baths yeah. from water hoses at the age of seven, mm-hmm. running sprints in the Phoenix summer at the age of 10, all to make that dream happen at yeah. 22. Yeah. So just because it looks like not a lot of effort, Cam Haynes is another good example. You look at his life now, mm-hmm. and he always harps on this, oh, it must be nice. But what you didn't see was when he was 18, 19 years old, partying on the weekends, working in a warehouse for four bucks an hour. And yet he decided, he flipped the switch, he decided to put in 30 years of effort and time, and now it's all paying off. And so that's what I wanted to focus here, especially from the fitness perspective. And again, this morning, like we talked about, it was a good example, waking up and we both got our workout in. Mm -hmm. Getting into the gym this morning was tough. So... My first effort paradox was waking up and getting out of bed. Yeah. The second paradox was I was sitting there reading, actually getting ready for the podcast this morning. It would have been easier, and I actually wanted to just keep doing that. Mm. But I had to shut myself off, and I had to go get in the gym. So that took mm. effort to go get in the gym. Mm. And guess what? When I was done, man, that, that feeling of exhaustion when you're done with a workout, we talk about it a yeah. bunch. There's nothing that matches yeah, that. 100%. I mean, it's, it's a drug like no other yeah. because you know that you put in great effort. Yeah. You know that you've earned that sweat. You've earned that fatigue as opposed to, you know, getting that dopamine hit somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Another example, we were in San Antonio over the weekend and uh, we went to these caverns. I forget what they're called, but there's this place in in San Antonio and you walk through all these little caves and and you're 200 feet below the surface. It's fascinating, Mm -hmm. absolutely fascinating. But you're winding, you're walking upstairs and you're walking through and and, and this isn't a brag, but because I trained so much, like it was nothing for me. Mm. And in fact, my two-year-old didn't want to walk a single step of it. <laughs> <laughs> so all those loaded carries I've been yeah. doing these past years, I literally had to carry my 40 pound son the entire 
Yeah. We're going up stairs. We're going downstairs. And it didn't fatigue me because of the effort I've been putting. And again, that's not to pat myself on the back. There's tons of people who do that. A little bit. But a little bit. <laughs> but my point is that experience yeah. was so much more enjoyable because I was prepared yes. for it. Because I'd put the effort in. Yeah. Had I been 300 pounds, never lifted weights, and my son, guess what? My son's still going to be complaining yeah. and not wanting to walk. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot worse. That experience is going to be a lot worse than had I put in the effort yeah. previous. So I guess my point is, it's this paradox of, yes, it sucks to get up every day yeah. and work out. I know it does. It's hard. It's still hard for me 15 years into this. Mm -hmm. And that may be, I don't know if that's encouraging or discouraging for somebody who doesn't work out right now, yeah. that it's still going to be hard in 15 years. Yeah. But it's worth the effort. Mm -hmm. That's the take-home message here is the benefits of training daily or every other day or however often you can mm -hmm. far outweigh any sort of effort that it takes to get yourself right. there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And and it I think it's encouraging when you say that. 15 years it's still hard because there's a lot of times that we look at people like, oh, it's just easy for yeah. them. Well, and and it probably wouldn't feel as good if it was, if it did get easy. Now it, yeah. it's easier, but it's still a, a mental shift I have yeah. to make in my mind. Yep. It still would be easier to sleep in. And so that's what makes, I think, that feeling when I'm done so yeah. well worth it. Yeah. Because I know what it took to get myself in here and get through this. Yeah. Now, again, this is a, um, a small example. We're talking fitness here. I, I get it, but it's important. Oh, yeah. It, it, it applies across the board. But, but I, I, my point back to, hey, listen, it's encouraging. The reason I, I have been enjoying my, my workout regimen lately is because there's people that all look at me like, dang, they're in like crazy good shape. Like if I could only be in that good a shape, right, it would be easy. Mm -hmm. And then you're all working out alongside them and you realize like it sucks for them too. Yeah. Like we're in this together. Yeah. Like we, we suffer together. And that's one of the things about team sports. that's really good. It's like, Hey, we're all going to suffer together. And there's something really good. And we're going to put that effort in and we're all going to move forward together. Something about that community that I actually like. So I think it's encouraging when you're like, hey, it's still hard for those people yeah. that like, quote unquote, have it together, yeah. or have it figured out, or they've got, they're disciplined or they're this. No, it still sucks. Mm -hmm. It still hurts. Like yeah, 75 you, days into running, it still sucks running yeah. two, three miles at did, night. Did you hear that part of the Cam Haynes story where he's talking about uh, running with Lance Armstrong? Yeah, he's talking about yeah. his calves or whatever, yeah. right? Yeah, so, that's where I got, right. yeah. So Lance Armstrong, Olympic athlete, you know, Tour de France champ, whatever, mm -hmm. you would think, oh my gosh, he's untouchable. Running can't be hard for him. Yeah, he's, he's, he has the, mo the best endurance on planet Earth. Yeah. And Cam tells a story about how he was running behind him in one of their marathons, and he catches up to him, and they get to talking, and, and uh, Lance Armstrong is complaining about how his calves hurt during the yeah. run. And Cam says it hit him in that moment, like, this guy isn't God. Yeah. He's not untouchable. Yep. He hurts just like me. Yep. And he said that actually fueled him yep. for the rest of it. But the point, to your overall point, is Lance Armstrong still has to, there's still effort required for Lance Armstrong yeah. to work out. Lan Lance Armstrong, Cameron Haynes, David Goggins, mm -hmm. they still have those voices in their head every morning when they mm -hmm. get up, or Jocko when he posts a 323 wake up on his watch. He still has to battle that voice in his head that says, eh, don't need to put in the effort today. Don't do it. You can justify it. There, there's literally two differences between Cam Haynes and you listening to this if you don't work out every single day. The two differences are, number one, time. He's been doing a lot longer. But number two, he doesn't listen. To, he doesn't. He takes action instead of listening to that voice. Yeah. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. There is no other difference between you two. Mm -hmm. There's nothing special about him. He wasn't born a certain way. He's just chosen for a very long time to not listen to that voice. That's right. And that would be my encouragement to somebody listening to this whose fitness isn't a part of their normal routine. Yeah. Is all it comes down to is not listening to that voice. And, and, you and yes, you have barriers. Yes, there's things that get in your way. I get it. Trust us. We ha both have kids. We both have full-time jobs. There's a lot in our way. We just made it a priority. Yeah that this medicine of fitness, which that's what it is, mm -hmm. is much better than <laughs> pills yeah. in 10 years and yeah. surgeries to repair my blocked up heart. That's right. All right, I wanna take a quick minute to talk about our partner, Choctaw Casino and Resort. Uh, we are really, really humbled 
uh, and grateful to be a partner for them. If you've listened to the show for any amount of time, uh, you've heard how great the resort is there, how great the casino is, the new expansion. They've doubled in size, 3,000 new slots. They've got unbelievable sports bar. They've got unbelievable restaurants, unbelievable movie theaters, arcades for kids. It is endless, the things that they've not only improved but added. Um, but it's just an the, the experience that they provide is second to none. Choctaw Nation has done an incredible job with the community, with philanthropy, with support. Um, they have just done incredible things. So we are extremely humbled and grateful to partner with Choctaw Casino and Resort. Make sure, I know you know it, it's just a short drive up 75. Go check them out. And now back to the episode. Yeah, that's exactly right. And again, we're talking fitness because we want to we want to really harp on the physical aspect of it. But this does apply to almost all areas in life. If it's intentionality, like it's a whole lot easier as a husband to just say, hey, Friday night, let's put the kids down and let's just watch something here or let's order takeout, bring it in instead of all right, I'm going to go find a babysitter. I'm speaking to myself here. I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to go call and set up a babysitter or call the grandparents or whatever, and we're going to set up something for the kids, and I'm going to call and make a reservation, and we're going to get ready, and I'm going to have to get off of work early, and I'm going to have to like plan out an actual date night with my wife. Like It's way easier just to say, hey, I'll just grill, and, yep. you know, and let's hang out at the house. You know, let's not talk to each other. No, like it takes effort. And I'm literally speaking to myself right now because this is something that like I'm really trying to be intentional about. Um, but it's it's all areas. If it's work, if it's parenting, if it's a hobby that you may have, like Cam Haynes, literally it, his whole thing, his whole basis started off of bow hunting, a mm -hmm. hobby. Mm -hmm. And he created this discipline and this... Um, this notoriety is like one of the hardest workers out there because he just pursued his hobby and put in the extra effort so that when he actually was out hunting, he was in the best shape of anybody out there hiking in and out. He wasn't going to let the elements like stop him from doing it, carrying uh, an elk after he quartered it up and had to carry it out. Not mm -hmm. a problem. Like he just trained for that and was the best at that. Like if you, I mean, I've heard him speak quite a bit, but it's like, he wasn't training and he wasn't doing loaded carries and he wasn't running and he wasn't lifting so that his Instagram followers could be better and he could be on the Joe Rogan podcast or the Andy Frisella podcast. Like he was doing it so he could be a better bow hunter. Yeah. He saw value in the effort it took yes. to put in those hours of work because there was value on the other end of what I love to do is yeah. easier now because of the effort. Yeah. That I put and, in. and one thing to not lose sight of is be that example is when you put in the effort, you see residual benefits that you don't even account for or plan for, for making that decision. Mm -hmm. Like the workout, getting up in the morning, here's it's for me, it's okay. I, so I can fit it into my day, but guess what? The residual benefits of that are also, Hey, I'm in a better mood. I'm more productive at work. When I'm home, I'm better with my kids. I actually am able to get off of work because I've gotten stuff done earlier in the day. Like I actually go to sleep at night because I got early. Like these are all benefits that like in the morning, it's it's either do I stay in bed or do I work out? Mm -hmm. And do I get in better shape? Yep. And that's it. But all of these things, the more effort you put into something, the more you pour yourself into it and commit to it and don't listen to that bitch voice and don't listen to all those things, people telling you you shouldn't do it and why you can't do it, the more you dismiss those and put in the effort, the benefits are just going to continue to stack up and, and those benefits that you don't even plan for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another example is yesterday, you know, the 230 feeling was hitting Yeah, for me yesterday strong because we, like I said, we were on vacation and, and we joked about this. Yeah. Vacation with kids is not really vacation. No. It's just taking care of your kids somewhere else. <laughs> and so I was feeling it yesterday at 2.30. Yeah. And just like we've talked about in the past, I had two choices in that moment. Yeah. One, I could grab some coffee. Yeah. That takes very little effort. Yeah. The effort of getting up and going to the coffee maker and making yeah, it, that's, yeah. that's some effort, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So I could have grabbed that uh -huh. to give me a little boost. Yeah. Or what I chose to do because of, like you said, the residual yeah. effects, uh -huh. the health benefits, I got up from my desk, 
I went outside and I took a 10 minute walk. And guess what? When I was nice. done with that 10 minute I thought you walk. you were going to say you, you, you took a bump of Coke. Well, I thought that was where you're going. That's with a that. great alternative as well. Yeah, I was going to say it's just, <laughs> it's less, it's a little bit more effort than, than yeah. coffee. You, but you got to snort pretty hard. Yeah. But I was going to say the burn is kind of, okay. <laughs> but once kids, it tingles not, your brain, we do not support <laughs> drug use. That, that to be is clear, I've never tried joke. cocaine. So, <laughs> no, but seriously. I got my vitamin D, uh -huh. I got my nature, uh -huh. so my mood was boosted, yeah. my energy levels were higher, yeah. all from a 10, it took more effort yeah. to go down the stairs, go down the elevator, How uncomfortable go is outside. that to say, hey, either I've got to pull away from this conversation with a coworker, or I've got to stop working on this project that I'm working, mm -hmm. I've, got to, I've got to take some time, and it's uncomfortable because I feel the pressure yep. of like needing to just be here and just be busy. Right. right. But then when you come back, how much better it was. Oh, the 10 minute hiatus boosted me further than yeah if I just got up and got no. coffee. So that's the effort paradox. And if that's some, if you're somebody listening to this and that's been the barrier between you and really getting, because this, these episodes are focused on your physical body. So if that's been the barrier between you and physical, a physically fit body, yeah. understand number one, that you're not weird. Yeah. Everybody struggles with this yeah. and take that as an encouragement and not a discouragement that you suck because you can't listen to that, but because you do listen to that bitch voice. That's not the point here. The point is we all struggle with this, but some of us have chosen to choose the side that effort is beneficial as opposed to effort is effort right. yeah. <laughs> for lack of a better term. Yeah. So if that's, if you're struggling with this, just understand the value of the effort you put in is going to feel so much better yeah. than if you just continue down the path. Yeah, and I, least think, resistance. I think like a lot of things in culture that we are counter, um, we are countering essentially, right? The whole idea of, oh, work smarter, not harder. Like, okay, I get it. But there's, like we're saying, there's value in actually working harder yes, too. for sure. Work harder. Amen. Amen. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that episode. Hopefully you got something out of that. If you did, please help us out by sharing this, pod, this podcast. Text it to some friends. Post it on your Instagram and your TikTok and all that good stuff. And another important thing that we haven't called on in a while is leaving us a review and a rating yeah. on whatever platform you listen. I know Spotify does it. Most of our reviews have come from Apple Podcasts, which yeah. is great. That's yeah. where I listen to most of mine. But if you listen on Spotify, they have a place there too. But yeah. would really appreciate you guys. Even if you've left one in the past, go leave another one. Yeah. Because that's like how you guys the used to be good. Now you suck. <laughs> <laughs> that's how the algorithm works. Yeah. Fortunately, unfortunately, however you want to phrase that, is that the more ratings we can get the more five-star ratings we can get obviously the more the, the more they're going to push that out yeah. to other people and that's the hope here is that we grow this community we you know reach more people uh -huh. because these we feel that these messages are important and not to boost ourselves up that's yeah, not this, the that's point that's not it yeah the point is to encourage everyone yeah and and like ben said just a couple minutes ago is these are focused around physical improvement um but this is not a Hey, look, you need to, you need to improve your physical stature because you need to look better and you need this. When I don't think we've mentioned looking better once. We haven't, in we this haven't, but I want, I don't, I want to make no, sure it's I, not lost I, I, because I'm, I'm enhancing your point yeah. because we're not, we are not that like, Hey, get in the gym and get swole or get shredded or get lean or get tone, whatever, whatever mm -hmm. term that they're using in the gym these days. It's not that when we're talking about taking advantage of this one shot at life, we are a testament in different journeys at different times in our lives is the benefits across the board. If you are taking care of the physical side, it makes the other aspects easier. So I'm not saying everything is not saying it's easy. I'm saying it's easier. Yep. The mental aspect, the discipline aspect, the empathy aspect, all of these, all of these characteristics that, that we hope that people try to adopt and employ in their lives the physical aspect is only one of them, but we just see it pour over in all these other areas. And so it's, it is not a physical, you need to physically be stronger and better. You need to be healthier. You're fat and lazy. That's not what we're saying. We're just saying the benefits that come from the physical side of it are, we are a living testament of, of, of realizing those, um, really those rewards of actually putting in the, the effort and work because it is just, it helps in other areas. Yep. Now, again, it's not the answer to all by any means. Like, it's a good start though. It's, it's, it's one place to start. Yeah. All right. Podcast is over. Turn this off. 
Get yourself out there. Let, let us be the voice in your head. Get yourself out there. You can do it. <laughs> Get your work in. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good rest of the day. We will see you tomorrow.